Archimandrite Sebastian Dabovic, Serbian Orthodox Apostle to America, by Hieromonk Damascene. 1. An Apostle of Universal Significance Born during the presidency of Abraham Lincoln, Archimandrite Sebastian Dabovich has the distinction of being the first person born in the United States of America to be ordained as an Orthodox priest, and also the first native-born American to be tonsured as an Orthodox monk. His greatest distinction, however, lies in the tremendous apostolic, pastoral, and literary work that he accomplished during the forty-eight years of his priestly ministry. Known as the father of Serbian Orthodoxy in America, he was responsible for the founding of the first Serbian churches in the New World. This, however, was only one part of his life's work, for he tirelessly and zealously sought to spread the Orthodox faith to all peoples, wherever he was called. He was an Orthodox apostle of universal significance. Describing the vast scope of Father Sebastian's missionary activity, Bishop Irenae Dobrievich of Australia and New Zealand has written, Without any outside funding or organizational support, he carried the gospel of peace from country to country. Concentrating much of his work in the United States, he ceaselessly traveled back and forth across the American continent using every available mode of transportation, from stagecoach to railroad to foot. His wider ministry stretched from the Aleutian Peninsula of Alaska to Russia and Japan to small Balkan towns on the coasts of the Black and Adriatic Seas. It is said that Father Sebastian baptized more people than any other Serbian priest of the Western Hemisphere. St. Nikolai Velimirovic of Zica, Serbia, who buried Father Sebastian at the Zica Monastery when the latter reposed there in 1940, called him a viceless man, and fittingly designated him the greatest Serbian missionary of modern times. 2. Preparation for Apostolic Ministry Father Sebastian was born in San Francisco on June 21st, New Style, 1863. His parents, Ilya and Jelena Dabovic, were the first recorded Serbian immigrants to the west coast of America. In the company of his two older siblings and his father's brother, Nikolai, his parents had originally come from the village of Sasovici near Herzegenovi at the entrance of the Bay of Kotor, Montenegro. After a long voyage, including crossing the Isthmus of Panama on donkeys, they arrived in San Francisco in 1853. Ilya Dabovic opened a store there, and he and his brother Nikolai established a wholesale fruit business. Father Sebastian was the fourth of seven children born to Ilya and Yelena, and was given the name Jovan, John. In his later years, he would write to a friend, I am the first male child born of Serbian parents in America. Before me, two of my cousins, female, were born to my uncle. An Orthodox community had formed in San Francisco six years prior to Father Sebastian's birth, called the Greek-Russian-Slovanian Eastern Church and Benevolent Society. The community consisted of Russians, Serbs, Greeks, and Syrians who had come to California in the first years of the Gold Rush. Since this community was not yet chartered as a parish and a priest had not yet been assigned to it, the spiritual needs of the Orthodox faithful in San Francisco were served by chaplains of the Russian Imperial Navy. In 1863, one of these chaplains, Hieromonk Kirill from the Tikvin Monastery in Russia, baptized the infant Jovan, the future Father Sebastian, in a chapel on the Russian warship Bogatyr, which was then anchored in the San Francisco Bay. Eventually, Father Sebastian wrote many years later, the Russian ships weighed their anchors, and there were no more priests here. It would seem that, left without a church or a priest, this orthodox community should have disappeared from the face of the earth, especially in the rush of gold, for wealth. Through the mercy of God, however, this did not happen. The orthodox, Serbs, Greeks, and Russians, lived at that time in concord and supported each other in a brotherly manner. 
On all major feasts they gathered together with those who had families and sang religious and folk songs. In 1868, a year after the United States purchased Alaska from Russia, a Russian priest was assigned to the San Francisco Orthodox community. The new pastor, Father Nikolai Kovrigin, had been transferred from the Russian Orthodox Cathedral in Sitka, Alaska, along with an assistant, Reader Vasily Shishkin. The community in San Francisco now began to hold church services in the home of a local Serb, Peter Sekulovich, located on Mission Street, which was at the time considered to be outside of town. The Dabovich family attended services regularly in this house chapel, known as the Prayer House of the Orthodox Oriental Church. Jovan Dabovich was a serious, quiet, and somewhat frail child, whose piety was manifest from an early age. He later recalled the first divine liturgy that Father Nikolai celebrated at the Sekulovich home, which was evidently the first liturgy celebrated on land, not on a ship, in San Francisco. At the time, he would have been four or five years old. I remember that first service, to which I went with my mother. We had to walk a long way along unpaved streets. Furthermore, we were mercilessly drenched by rain. At last, we reached a small house. We crossed over a ditch, or temporarily excavated gutter, on a plank and entered the church. The church was set up in a divided room. At the end, opposite the entrance, the holy Antimensian lay on a covered table. A little table in a corner served as the table of oblation. I remember two icons on the walls, the Savior and the Mother of God. There were approximately twenty communicants at that liturgy. In 1872, when Jovan was nine years old, the newly consecrated Russian bishop of Alaska and the Aleutians, John Mitropolsky, transferred his residence from Sitka, Alaska, to San Francisco. Since he was the only Orthodox bishop for the American continent, this move marked the transfer of the entire American diocesan administration to California. Bishop John was proficient in the English language and came from Russia to America with the intention not only of serving the needs of the Orthodox Native Americans and Russians in Alaska, but also of bringing the Orthodox faith to the heterodox on the North American continent. This was the primary reason why he moved the diocesan residents to California. In the midst of the large American population in San Francisco, he believed, the Orthodox Church would be able to reveal her truth to the non-Orthodox Christian confessions and to American society in general with greater effect and impact. It is likely that Bishop John's desire to bring Americans from other Christian confessions into the Orthodox Church was passed on to Jovan Dabovich even at that early period of his life, for it became Jovan's lifelong desire also. In coming to San Francisco, Bishop John erected a church on Pierce Street and consecrated it as the St. Alexander Nevsky Cathedral. As often as there was a service at the cathedral, young Jovan was there. Having become wholly dedicated to the church, he deeply loved the beauty and solemnity of Orthodox worship and desired with all his heart to serve God and his fellow man at the holy altar. As he later affirmed, it was his intention from childhood to become a priest, and he never thought of anything else. With this in mind, Jovan attended the Saturday Church School and the Greco-Russian Seminary, also known as the Mission School, that Bishop John had transferred from Sitka to San Francisco. At the small seminary, he studied alongside Aleut natives who had come from Alaska. There he became proficient in Russian and Church Slavonic, and also gained a fair knowledge of Greek. Recalling those days in San Francisco, Father Sebastian wrote, From the time of the arrival of the right Reverend John, priests, after his example, began to proclaim the word of truth to the flock in San Francisco. A Saturday school for the children of parishioners was opened, where they were taught the catechism and the Russian language. Michael Vladimirov was choir director and singing teacher. He also taught mathematics at the mission school. Besides the clergyman that taught at the school, Vladika himself also had seven classes a week in Holy Scripture and the Slavonic language. A native Greek, 
Demetrios Frankiades from the University of Athens, was teacher of the Greek and English languages. At the time of the Right Reverend John, as many as sixteen pupils studied at the bishop's school in San Francisco. Of that number, five are now serving in various positions of the local diocese. The Right Reverend John loved his school, one might say, with a singular love. As he grew to manhood, Jovan Dabovich became known not only for his love for the church, but also for his selflessness and abstinence. As Bishop Irene writes, those who knew him best invariably tell of his lack of ostentation and his disdain for personal wealth or possessions. A modern St. Nicholas, Jovan felt deeply the plight of the poor and helpless, identifying so readily with them that he preferred to wear only modest apparel and eat the simplest of meals often nothing more than milk or a little cheese, rather than to eat expensive meals and dress lavishly while others did without. Frequently, he simply gave his possessions away to those in need, a pattern that persisted throughout his life. After graduating from high school, Jovan served at the San Francisco Cathedral as a reader and chanter of church services, and as a teacher. In 1884, he was assigned to work in the same capacity at St. Michael's Cathedral in Sitka, which had been established in 1848 by the great enlightener of Alaska, St. Innocent. Amidst his far-reaching missionary endeavors, St. Innocent had converted the Tlingit, Kolosh, natives in the Sitka area to the Orthodox faith. Jovan Dabovich, when assisting at the Sitka Cathedral, became acquainted with native families that St. Innocent had originally evangelized. As a result, the 21-year-old Jovan began some missionary work of his own, manifesting the evangelical zeal that would become the hallmark of his life. Learning from the Orthodox Tlingits of Sitka that there was another Tlingit population to the northeast that had not yet converted to Orthodox Christianity, Jovan initiated their evangelization. As the catechist of the Sitka Cathedral, he organized a mission of Tlingit parishioners to bring the Orthodox faith to the non-Christian Tlingits in the area around present-day Juneau, over a hundred miles away. Several years later, he recorded, My assistance among the Indians, the Kolosh natives, Ivan Hlyantich, Pavel Katleyan, and others, set out for what was then a very small place, now the sizable town of Juneau, and following special instructions from me, they and other parishioners spread the word and orthodoxy, and the result of that is the present church of St. Nicholas in Juneau. So it happened. Within six years of the orthodox Tlingits of Sitka beginning to evangelize the Tlingits of Juneau under Jovan Dabovich's guidance, the Juneau natives began coming to Sitka for baptism. Three years later, in 1893, an Orthodox church was built in Juneau by the local natives together with Serbian gold miners who were then living in the area. Today it is the oldest continually functioning church in Alaska. During his stay in Alaska, Jovan decided to further his theological education in preparation for the holy priesthood. Thus, in 1885, he traveled to Russia, where he spent three years studying at the St. Petersburg and Kiev Theological Academies. In 1888, he was tonsured as a monk in St. Petersburg and given the name Sebastian. On December 25th of that year, he was ordained as a deacon in the same city by Metropolitan Isidor Nikolsky of Novgorod, St. Petersburg, and Finland. Metropolitan Isidor was a major figure in the Russian Orthodox Church and a major support of the Orthodox Church in the New World. When Father Sebastian was studying in St. Petersburg, Metropolitan Isidor was crowning fifty years of Episcopal service, having participated in the consecration of over one hundred bishops, including all the bishops of the American mission in the latter half of the nineteenth century. As Father Sebastian later wrote, the Metropolitan was the most faithful friend, spiritual advisor, and material support, under God, of the young church in North America in her many serious trials, temptations, and persecutions. Recalling his own association with the great hierarch, Father Sebastian wrote, 
I had the good fortune of obtaining my first official appointment to service in the ranks of the clergy from the Most Reverend Isidore, and furthermore had the spiritual consolation and privilege to obtain his personal blessing and to kiss the hand of the greatest prelate of the day. Hierodeacon Sebastian returned to San Francisco in June of 1889. There he served as a deacon under Bishop Vladimir Sokolovsky Avtonomov, who, in 1888, had been appointed to the American Diocese by the Holy Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church. Bishop Vladimir had previously served in the Japanese Orthodox Mission under St. Nicholas of Japan. Fluent in Japanese, he brought his Japanese cell attendant with him to San Francisco. It is likely that this connection with the Orthodox Church in Japan planted the idea in Father Sebastian of visiting Japan, which he did later in life. Bishop Vladimir had learned from St. Nicholas of Japan that, when the Orthodox faith is brought to new territories, it must be made available in the local languages. He became the first Orthodox hierarch in the New World to preach and serve in English, and he required his priests to learn and serve in this language as well. As Father Sebastian recalled, the bishop paid special attention in the temple to preaching the Word of God in English, which was the language commonly understood. To this end, the bishop himself, although not completely familiar with the English language, improvised talks in English, which the people readily heard. Bishop Vladimir also assigned Father Sebastian, as a native English speaker, to be the English language preacher at the San Francisco Cathedral. Musically talented, Bishop Vladimir formed a superb choir at the cathedral, which he instructed to sing English translations of Orthodox services set to traditional Russian melodies. His efforts attracted many people to the cathedral, which by that time had moved to Powell Street, so that it soon became filled beyond capacity. In 1888, he enlarged, remodeled, and magnificently adorned the cathedral and dedicated it to St. Nicholas. When, in 1889, this cathedral was destroyed by fire, Bishop Vladimir had a new cathedral built in honor of St. Basil the Great. Father Sebastian served as deacon in the consecration of the new cathedral. Father Sebastian had great admiration for Bishop Vladimir, seeing in him a true shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. The bishop was a man of refined, gentle character who had no regard for his personal needs, living a highly ascetical life and observing a sparse monastic diet. A missionary-minded hierarch like his predecessor, Bishop John, he was the first Orthodox bishop to traverse the American continent, which he did three times in search of Orthodox communities and of non-Orthodox people to bring into the faith. In 1891, he traveled to Minneapolis, Minnesota, in order to receive a Uniate, Eastern Rite Roman Catholic, priest, Father Alexis Toth, and his parish of 350 believers into the Orthodox Church. In this way, he began the return of American Uniates to Orthodoxy, a movement which would bring forth an abundant harvest in the years to come. Father Sebastian, in serving under Bishop Vladimir during his formative years as a deacon, was undoubtedly influenced by the bishop's evangelical spirit, just as he had been formed earlier by the missionary vision of Bishop John.